Today, we're going to be talking about mast cells in the GI tract. Hi, I'm Dr. Claire Francomano, and this is my YouTube channel where we talk about all things related to the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders. Gastrointestinal symptoms are so common in people with Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders, and there are many different things that can cause these gastrointestinal symptoms. But if you have other signs and symptoms that are suggestive of mast cell activation, either mast cell activation disorder or a mast cell activation syndrome, you might consider whether or not some of the GI symptoms you are experiencing could be related to those misbehaving mast cells in the GI tract. Common symptoms that mast cells can cause in the gastrointestinal tract include abdominal pain, gas, bloating, diarrhea or loose stools, heartburn and indigestion, and nausea and vomiting. Now, these are common symptoms, and it's important not to just race to a judgment that it's mast cells that are causing them. Very important to talk with your doctor about other possible explanations for these symptoms. But some of the other signs and symptoms of mast cell activation that could be present in other parts of the body include rashing, hives, itching. People will often say that they're having urinary symptoms. They may have been diagnosed with interstitial cystitis. Common problem in the lungs with mast cells is inflammation in the lungs, or it may be diagnosed as asthma. And so if these things are going on and you're having these kinds of GI symptoms of abdominal pain, gas and bloating, diarrhea, heartburn, and digestion, and nausea and vomiting, think about the mast cells as a possible contributor to some of those GI symptoms. So how do we tell about this? And it can be very difficult. There are a number of tests that are available to ascertain whether there are markers of increased mast cell activity in the blood. While they're very specific, so if they're positive, that gives us good information and it tells us it's likely to be related to the mast cells, they're not very sensitive. So we get frequent false negatives on those tests. Sometimes it's just worth taking maybe a month of doing treatment for mast cell issues. And that would include use of antihistamines because histamine is one of the biggest inflammatory molecules released by the mast cells. So we use antihistamines and then we use medications that will stabilize the mast cells. And so to prevent them from releasing all of those inflammatory molecules that they have inside them into the tissues. Now, histamine interacts with our cells in our body in two different receptors. We call them H1 and H2. The H1 blockers are all those medications that we think of as our allergy meds. So things like Benadryl, Zyrtec, Claritin, Allegra, those are all H1 blockers. And the H2 blockers are Pepsid. The major ones that we're using now are Pepsid and Tagamet. So Typically, I recommend for people to start with one of the H1 blockers and one of the H2 blockers. So we're blocking the effect of that histamine at both receptors. And then we use a mast cell stabilizer such as chromalin sodium to stabilize the mast cells and prevent the release of all those inflammatory molecules that are found in the mast cells into the tissue. The third element of our approach to treating mast cells in the GI tract is to limit foods with high histamine potential. And there is an excellent list that can be found. This is a Swiss website that has an extensive list of foods, and they're ranked from zero to three in terms of their histamine potential. The zeros and ones have minimal histamine potential, and the twos and threes progressively more so. So what I usually recommend to people is to take a period of about three weeks and limit themselves to the zeros and ones on that list. And then each day after that, to add in one food that's either a two or a three and just try it out. 
maybe have it more than once during that day and see whether eating that food causes anything like pain, abdominal pain, rashing, hives, any urinary symptoms, does it make you feel tired, any of these symptoms that we know can be related to mast cell activation. And I recommend keeping a diary so that you know which foods you're reactive to and which ones you're not. And just because you react to a food doesn't mean you can never eat Eat it. it just means if you do decide to go ahead and have it, you're going to go in eyes wide open. The other thing to know about the food response is that there may be days when you can tolerate a higher histamine food if the system is really kind of settled and there's not a lot of inflammation going on. You may be able to tolerate higher histamine foods than when your body is in a state of inflammation and there are a lot of mast cells that are releasing inflammatory molecules into the tissue and you just just can't take any additional histamine from the food supply. So when you're in that state of high inflammation, that might be a good time to kind of cut back on those higher histamine foods and just limit yourselves to the ones that are graded as zeros and ones. One other item, if your doctor is doing an endoscopy and plans to do a biopsy, it could be helpful if that biopsy material is stained for there are specific stains that can be used to look for the mast cells. These will not typically be done unless a special request is made to look for the mast cells. So if an endoscopy, an upper endoscopy is being done and there's a biopsy in the stomach or if there's a lower endoscopy and a biopsy is being done in the colon, the doctor can make a special request for staining for mast cells. And then depending on the number of mast cells that are seen in that tissue sample, that can help to establish whether or not the mast cells are likely to be playing a role in the gastrointestinal symptoms. So that is a brief, brief introduction to mast cells in the gastrointestinal tract. If this information has been useful for you, you may find it interesting to take a look at my YouTube video about mast cell activation in EDS and HSD. I thank you very much for your attention today, and I wish you the very best on your journey.